Okay, I'm calling mm -hmm. our board of commissioners meeting to order for July the 5th. Uh, Bill, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, just a reminder, our meetings are recorded and uh, these are all public meetings. Okay, uh, for this quarter, the next item of business is the employee of the quarter. And do you have that? I do. I'm going to read it because it's so eloquently put. The Umatilla County Employees Excellence Committee was created to acknowledge and commend the efforts of employees who serve the citizens of the county efficiently and effectively with a focus on professional development and outstanding customer service. In that spirit, the committee wishes to share with you the nomination letter from your peers that warranted this recognition. Congratulations to Tamara Partney. Hartley began her employment with Umatilla County October 15, 2007. In the 10 years Tamara has, been, has worked here, she repeatedly shows what an asset she is to the county. Tamara is among the first employees to take on additional ta tasks, fill in for others, and share knowledge with co-workers. Here are a few comments from her peers. Tammy goes above and beyond her duties. She's always willing to help whenever help is needed. She comes in early and stays late when needed. She has been an amazing trainer to me, being a new employee, and leads by great example. She always has amazing attitude and strives to make the workplace great. So, Tammy, if you would come up, please, I'd like to present you with these materials. Is and I do have a hanky here, so. Is Bob Stoltz here for pictures? Congratulations Thank first. You. It's Thank wonderful. You. This is the letter that I just read. That's yours to keep. This award comes along with some perks. The perks are you've been awarded eight hours of paid time off. Sounds like you won't take them very, very <laughs> soon. <laughs> you can get prior approval from your supervisor before using it and then return it with your time card when it's used. Okay. Okay? Thank you so much. And this is your Certificate of Excellence. Thank you. And again, congratulations. It's just primarily a recognition of the response to the hazmat okay. pictures. Wait until they get through. <clears throat> okay, other uh, awards recognitions this morning. I think Commissioner Alfred has a letter. We'd like to commend the Sheriff's Office for the work that they've been doing, the search and rescue in particular. There have been three incidents this year, two lost people, and and some people who were stranded across the river, up the upper Walla Walla River. And the Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue went up and provided, uh, provided assistance with that, and conducted the search. In that process, they used the uh, latest technology. There's, they have a, uh, two or three drones there, and they were able to take pictures, particularly of the fire that was out on the highway. There was a fire that that uh, broke out in, a, in the back of a truck along the highway. They had to pull over. The drone was able to go in, actually up close and personal, and figure out what was going on with it and what, where, whether the emergency responders were safe going closer to respond to that. And they, they were able to do that with, with the, that technology. So I commend them for that. Great. Thank you. OK, any other uh, recognitions or awards? Um, so let's move on. Uh, we don't have uh, minutes to approve. 
Uh, so, additions to the agenda, Doug? No. Okay, no additions. Uh, this is a point in time if you're not specifically on the agenda as an item under a business item uh, to have public input to the board. Is there anyone out there that wants to address the board? All right, thank you. Uh, there's a presentations, uh, Nitro in the Blues. Who is doing that this morning? He's, he's Do, not here, I don't see they're not here. Okay. Let's move right on then. Uh, our business items are uh, CHI bond issuance and this is a public hearing. So at this time I'm going to open this hearing uh, for public comment and I would ask for a staff report. Yeah, I believe Mr. Bond is here. Yeah. Mr. Bond, I just want to say that I this is coming before the board on the request of the CHI for the issuance of bonds and their counsel here, Mr. Blond, is present and can give you the background. Hi, uh, my name is Greg Blond. I'm an attorney with Ward Carrington and Sutcliffe and, and we represent uh, CHI, the parent company of, of, the, of the local hospital that will benefit from the bond proceeds. And, and just briefly, uh, nonprofits can take advantage of tax-exempt financing just like municipalities, such as the county, but they can't do it directly. They have to do it through some sort of municipal entity. So uh, in this case, they're doing it through a Colorado entity. The parent company is going to take, the, the parent nonprofit is going to uh, use tax-exempt financing to uh, benefit multiple facilities throughout the country, including some here in Oregon and including uh, some here in Umatilla County. Whenever that happens, federal tax law requires there to be a public hearing and for there to be an approval of a local elected official. So that's what you're being asked to do today. Uh, the county is not responsible for the bonds. The nonprofit is responsible for the bonds. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> to do that. So there's no way that this bond or any of its implications would affect the county financially? That, that's correct. Throughout all the documents, it's made clear that the county is just uh, is giving this approval in a, in a limited purpose for the tax approval, but that the nonprofit is responsible for paying the bonds. That's correct. This consolidates several bonding issues into one? That's correct, yeah. yes. We, we've done this over the years past, and it's a performance of non-specific that something the county is required to do by statute. By statute. Okay, other comments, questions? <clears throat> okay, at this time, uh, are there any comments from the public? Okay, hearing none, I will close this public part of the hearing and we will deliberate and I am ready for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move we adopt order BCC 2017-041. I will second that. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, next item of business. Byron, you're up. Almost. <laughs> Commissioners, good morning. Uh, Byron Smith, Chair of the EOTech Board, uh, 1705 East Airport Road. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick update. Construction continues to move <coughs> along quickly. It's not as visible now that the major pieces are up, but a lot of the finished work is going on inside the, the various projects. And I've got a few pictures that I can share with you. <coughs> so here's the restroom facility. Um, Start here we go. So, um, Did I go too far? that's okay. Here's this is the overall site picture that we're getting taken each week, and the, the biggest changes that you can see is you, they're starting to put the gravel in place for all the pathways and, and the roads near the, the uh, arena, and then the, the grass really is, is starting to look, look uh, nice and green on the, the commons area. 
Also, we, we had some volunteers um, through uh, Agri Northwest take that parking area to the southwest there, um, and they disked it under a little bit, and then took a water truck and and have uh, then started to compact it a little bit to try to get it ready for parking uh, during the fair and rodeo. So. There were some there were some piles of brush. Yeah, those have all been cleaned out. Okay. And, and uh, disposed of. And they went clear over to that west fence? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so here's the shot of the rodeo arena. Um, they put the bleachers up in kind of two phases uh, of this first first bit, and uh, they're working on the second piece right now. And uh, they, they're moving quickly. You can also see right there that the lights have been moved. Uh, up from the old arena, and then uh, they've also installed their ticket booth that's on this side, so that project keeps moving forward. Uh, I took this shot just to show they've got a number of the light posts up. They've also uh, got most of the uh, siding and, and roof work done on the mercantile building, and that's uh, moving along. Uh, quickly as well, and this is the restroom facility that's kind of between the rodeo and the and the uh, the fair side. This uh, they're doing all the interior work right now. I know they're working to install uh, sheetrock and FRP and everything, so that's moving along well. Uh, this is a shot of the barns. Um, also, I think maybe the next one will show, but the the things are going well. Um, they're getting finished, the, all the little small buildings that are inside the barn, so they're mostly electrical rooms and some small offices, and then, then in the small animal barn they're putting in the, the showers and bathroom facilities. Those are all getting finished, framed, and, and sided. Um, and uh, there's, there's the small animal barn. Uh, also, just last week started work on the fence that goes between the rodeo and the, and the fair side. Um, so that, that fencing is starting to go in. And go ahead and then another shot of the commons area. The grass is looking good. I know the landscaper came in and treated for some of the weeds that have started to, to get in there. So, Will the uh, office in the big barn Will that accommodate both 4-H and F-15? I believe so. I think okay. there's two small offices. So All right, because they were concerned about that, both those groups. Right, so. I'm pretty okay. sure that's the plan. Great. And then uh, you can see the announcer's booth has been framed up, and they're starting to get ready to put the final siding on it and everything. So uh, things continue to move forward. Um, also, as I was talking before, we have received uh, some applications for the general manager position. I'm going to share those with the board today, and we'll start continue the process of selecting. Them. Are you going to send those whole packets out? Yeah, I will. I'm going to scan them all together so we can look at them. Okay, great. Everybody, at all of them. So, how much work's left until the fair? <laughs> I don't think you have time for me to get all this. <laughs> um, yeah, there's. We are going to put one on. Yeah, we are. Um, there's. You know, there's a. a a lot of site work at the arena area as far as um, there's going to be some, there'll be sod installed, they're, they're working on the landscaping, uh, they're also, like I said, they're putting in the pathways and so forth, those will all be, the curbs will be put in and then the, the asphalt that right now we're shooting for the second week, not next week I think, but the week after of July to have the uh, the paving contractor in there to finish all the paving that's left. Um, the piping was installed for the to connect to the Stanfield Irrigation District. Now the final pieces we needed. Uh, the pump station was the longest um, lead time item, and it's on order. And we're still planning to have that done by uh, the end of July. It looked like they were working on it this morning. Good. Good. The. Uh what we thought was a, a mobile unit down at Stafford Hansel that we were going to move up for mm -hmm. safety and security office. That is not a mobile unit. It is a 
a modular unit with oh. no acts, nothing. Oh, okay. So we're Can't still, county is still trying to figure out okay, uh, so a company to move that. that okay. We don't know when. Okay. So that's All going right. to be a slow process, I'm afraid. Okay. That's good to know. The site will be ready for it um, when, when I have to figure out how to get it there. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Appreciate you coming up and sharing that. A month away. I did leave uh, with Melinda uh, some documents related to the bridge loan that we're doing with Banner Bank, and, and Doug will take a look at it, and then we just need a signature on it. Okay. Uh, George's name was on that, I think, because he was chair last yeah, year. Yeah, he was chair when we started it. If but we he, no, uh, let's not change okay. it. Uh, he is our liaison to our budgeting okay. uh, process, so I'd rather have him okay. continue to do that. Okay, so and if something once, happens, then he's responsible. <laughs> <laughs> so once that's completed, just let me know. We'll either pick it up. Uh, it's not a big rush. We were able to get the check last week from the bank. And okay. So just to formalize the documents. Yeah, that was tongue in cheek. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing will happen but No, no, we're gonna get it get it done. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Any other questions? Uh -huh. All right. Thanks, Thank Brian. you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. next item of business is the Westfield edition road repairs and this is being done under one of our agreements, uh, a lid agreement. So, Tom, you've got the, the whole bunch of items here. Yeah, but it doesn't add up too much. <laughs> Welcome Tom back. Bellows, Public Works. Uh, yeah, for the last three or four years, the, the residents up in Westfield Boulevard, uh, which is a, a public road, it's not a a county maintained road have um, asked for us to help them with some maintenance uh, for reimbursement. So, and this is just uh, another um, another one of those requests from them that we go up and patch some potholes and, and send them a bill, and they'll send us a check. We've uh, uh, never had a problem. Uh, they've, they've always been tickled to, to pay and. Uh, it's and we currently right now we have the time to do it just prior to chip seal so it, it just made perfect sense to us to go ahead and try to help them out if we can so, so this isn't an LID no okay no this isn't an LID this is just a, a, a this is just a request to uh, add some potholes for reimbursement since it is not a county road just a public road it requires board approval for public works to spend any funds on it or help even do it even, it even yeah even though there's reimbursement it just requires the board's approval to and if they don't pay you go take the potholes back uh, recreate them we'll make new ones <laughs> i'll send commissioner gibbons after him he, he has a way of <laughs> way with people thanks <laughs> I'm ready for a motion. I'm ready for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move we adopt order RD 2017-05, approving the Westfield, the work on the Westfield Edition roads. Second. Questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. You ready for your paint truck? Well, I hope so. Um, we've, uh, the paint truck, this paint truck wasn't on our want list for that we're looking for for equipment however when it did become available uh, we we took we're taking a very hard look at it and we'd like to purchase it uh, currently and for the past several years uh, we've used Morrill County's paint truck and uh, to the tune of about anywhere from six thousand to ten thousand dollars a year that's what we pay Morrill County for the use of their paint truck um, and in what the difference is is whether they have an operator that comes and, and we have to pick up the operator's wages along with, with some other things. This truck came available at surplus properties for $8,500. Um, it just simply seemed like good business to us. We'll 
put that $8,500 in our pocket and on our roads rather than, than in Morrill County's roads. I really do appreciate the working relationship we have with Morrill County because we uh, we do have opportunities to uh, to share resources a number of times, and, and it helps both of us out. But, um, so this this truck came available. Uh, it's a um, it's it's a really nice unit. We called it came from Bend. Uh, we had numerous conversations with their folks down there. Uh, they've actually already used it this year, so it's it's ready to ready to go right now. And um, so that's we're requesting permission to buy this paint truck from Oregon Surplus Properties. Uh, Tom, a, a question I had. When we've used uh, Morrow County's truck, we've ended up every year we've used it having put some money into repairing their truck. Yeah, yeah. When when we use it, if it breaks while we use it, we fix it. I mean, that's and and we've had we've had to do repairs. Uh, nothing that I would say is is overwhelming cost wise. I mean, it isn't like we've replaced a rear end or something. But but it's always you know we've always had to do repairs and and so. Uh, Again, it would just make sense to do repairs on our own equipment rather than somebody else's. My understanding is this is going to take some fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars worth of repairs to make it fully serviceable. No, this truck, this truck's ready to go. Oh, I thought I read that it was going to take more. No. Okay. No, this truck is 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 ready. To matter of fact, if if we get approval, we'll probably go to Salem tomorrow and drive it home. <laughs> So are we looking at eighty five hundred or ten thousand? Uh, eighty eighty five hundred dollars is what the cost of the machine. The ten thousand dollars that you're reading, there's ten thousand dollars worth of spare parts that come oh, come with the truck. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought we were going to need to pay more in, 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 to replace parts no, 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 and, no, no, and no. paint equipment on this truck, and I was just trying to get the full says, value. Says and, yeah, in, in our estimate, it comes with them ten thousand dollars worth of spare parts. Excellent. Uh, in fact, I think one of the pictures, yeah, the, the picture on the very last picture shows the, the entire back cab full of that's that's all boxes of parts. Um, and the reason ODOT's getting rid of those parts is because this is the last paint truck in the fleet that uses any of those. So everything that was on the shelf that was brand new goes with the truck. Great opportunity. Does it uh, fit within your equipment purchase program of, in lieu of something else, or how? Oh, yeah, it, yeah, it's within within the budget. I mean, we're we're fine now from that standpoint. Tom, just offhand, if we had to buy a brand new paint truck, what would it cost us? Uh, a, a similar truck to this, uh, hundred and fifty to two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so we've saved a chunk of change. Quite a bit. Mr. Chair, I move approval of the authorization to purchase the paint truck. Second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And then the last item. Yeah. Um, three years ago, uh, the Public Works Department was blessed with the park and, and a number of, of things that go along with that. Uh, we've, had, we've had some changes in management up at the park. And one of the things that we recognized is the fact that the the house was part of the payment package for for um, for the park person. Well, that's fine when you have somebody that's living at the park. Our current manager lives 15 minutes away from the park, which doesn't and has no intention of, of ever living at the park. So, really, what what happens is he's He's not getting the benefit of, of his full compensation package because he can't utilize that. When it made more sense to me to actually, if if down the line, if we would ever change managers and and uh, they would like to use the residence, that we actually deduct that from compensation rather than include that in the package because then what what happens is you got a lot more level playing field so that's that's one one thing to, one reason that I started looking at this and then when I when I got to looking at, at the overall uh, compensation that, that our park manager was getting I felt that, that based on the, um, the job that he was 
asked to do, it was it was a touch on the low side. So I got with uh, Doug and and our HR department, and we we discussed it. And then I I talked with finance. The uh, uh, this year we actually raised our our camping fees by five dollars. Um, the the money that that's going to, between the money that that's going to generate and the money that's that's being saved, we've uh, uh, in the current or the budget year that we just finished, we we saved almost three thousand dollars off of utilities, and I think that's a, a direct result of number one, the the manager is is doing a very good job of being conservative with the utilities and then the the house not being. <coughs> lived in all the time so uh, primarily what we're asking is to uh, is a three-phase program to get the park manager wages up to a, a level uh, <coughs> equal to a, um, a lead person out of the road department this is part of the road department union um, and we're not asking that it just be approved Every year, the only way it's the only way that we're going to uh, increase that amount is if the revenues are the revenue stream pays for that. So currently, uh, I'm asking for a a $500 increase in his salary, um, and the current revenues that we've gained from the um, increase in fees is we'll pay for that. So it's paid for currently. It's not money that we're not betting on the come. And then the and then with two subsequent five hundred dollar increases down the line as long as the revenues support that. Uh, to get this up to a level where I feel that it's it should be. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Questions. Uh, has this manager ever lived in the house? No. Never has, never used it. No. So what what's going to be done with the house? Actually, the house the the house doubles at not only as as a residence, but it's also the office. It's, it's so so uh, one whole third of of the house is is office, and will be will continue to be office space. So so other than than for instance, if uh, if folks had an event and they needed changing. Area or something like that that we could that we could do that, but so primarily the house is still going to be used utilized by the park staff. It'll be for eating their lunches or or you know the office the office uses, but it won't. Um, there isn't a lot of other use that we can do with it at this time. Okay, so it's organized. The management there is organized. So there is is there on-site management all the time. We we have a camp host program plus we have a a um, uh, a seasonal employee. So between the the park manager, the camp host, and the seasonal employee, they we have we have adequate coverage at the park all the time. Okay. Other questions? No. None from me. I, I will add that uh, we've had numerous positive comments about the park. In the last two years, uh, I've gone up, looked at the park. Uh, we've had a meeting up there with the park board. Uh, just a, a really good program. So, Tom, thank you for that. Yep. That's staff. That, nothing I did. We just knew you could make it happen. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the step one classification adjustment for the park manager position. I'll second that. Other questions? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Okay, uh, next item is the school based mental health work uh, staff report, and who is presenting that this morning? Everybody's looking at each other. Uh -huh. Amy Ashton Williams, one of the prepared for Pink Canyon. Okay. Um, Jennifer Blake, HR Director. 
Um, this is coming before the board uh, as the Hermesis School District has been working with GOBI and our um, Human Services Department to create a program that they're calling the RISE program to offer mental health services inside the um, schools for Hermiston School District. So this is coming before the board uh, now that we have approval of the funds from GOBI to um, basically authorize the creation of the positions so that, that we can man this program. So with that, Amy is asking for a program manager, two, uh, excuse me, and three um, service providers to be able to service this contract. Okay, questions? Is the, uh, the funding from Gobi, is that, is that assured? Or uh, Mr. Campbell, I talked with them last week and they said yes. As of July 1, he was hoping the program would be up and going. But we don't know how much I do not know the amount, no. Uh, but it but says it would be a minimum of three? 135000 is what they're anticipating. Which is adequate enough to cover the cost of this? No. Not 135000 for <clears throat> those many positions. Well, I have 93, well, so 74, and 68. Oh, excuse me. It's 300000 will fund this yeah, program for 300000 I was looking at the wrong dollar. Okay. 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 So that will cover Yes. And okay. then it says that they will separately be looking to Gobi to, or asking Gobi for 135000 for the uh, three used vehicles? Yes. Yes. That. Um, so uh, essentially, no net cost to the county. Correct. Is, it, is the grant from Gobi a ongoing thing? Well, like next year, are we going to be looking at this coming onto the budget? Or are we going to be looking at Gobi still funding it? Um, I, I wish Amy was here. Unfortunately, I that's on information that I have. Um, you know, obviously, if we don't have the funding, we won't continue the program. So um, it would be contingent upon. So it'd be hired funding. subject to that. Yeah. And they'll know that coming in. Yes. I don't have anything further. Okay. Ready? No other questions. Okay. Mr. Chair, move approval of the uh, request from, from Human Services to hire three additional people to work the uh, RISE program at Hermiston School District. Second. Any other comments? It's actually four positions. Four positions. Two, yes it is. Yeah. This is, I missed, missed where it said two. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Uh, next item is the uh, post PERS employment. Good morning, Commissioners. Daniel and I. Director of Administrative Services. Beverly Reed, our library, law librarian, also clerks, uh, works in the records department, does our purchasing, and also helps back uh, us up in IT, is retiring or has retired as the end of last month on the 30th, is returning back to work to, uh, well, actually on Monday it was July 1st. Third, to work as a post purse employee, so we need to have that approved. She will be helping us to man our office one day a week in Melton Freewater, doing clerk duties there, providing services for the uh, county there. At the same time, she'll continue to be a backup for the records department, and we'll be doing our computer purchasing at the same time. So she'll be kind of that floater to fill in when they are on vacation and stuff. We went ahead and removed our part-time employee that we had in the records office and so we're keeping Beverly to also fill that position there. So we're requesting for her to come back to work as a post hers half-time employee where she will have to monitor her hours and make sure she does not exceed the thousand and um, would it be twenty or thousand thirty nine. There we go. Any questions, commissioners? Dan, you've, uh, this, this person has retired, so that's opened up a spot. Has that spot been filled? 
what the deal is is in our budget we went ahead and placed that we were reducing her down to a point uh, five FTE from a point eight, which is saving us about thirty five thousand. So it's part of your budget budgeted scale down. Yes. Yeah. I have nothing for you. Okay. Go Chair, ahead. move for approval of the post prayers employment. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks, Dan. Okay, the transfer of property. And this, I believe, is the City of Stanfield. City of Stanfield. Uh, this is going to be for the board for approval. Um, uh, a piece of property unimproved uh, lot in City of Stanfield was foreclosed on for doing property taxes. It is located basically in the flood zone for the city of Stanfield, which they have made it as a parkway, and it's right in the middle of that. And uh, they had previously tried to acquire it, but weren't able to do so from the property owner. Now that the county owns it, they are requesting that the county convey it to the city of Stanfield for public purposes. Okay, what's time limit on when the county convey? Is it twenty years? Twenty years. Yeah. Okay. And it is right next to their park? It's actually right in the middle of it. In the middle of the park. There's the pictures. Um, of it. Oh, there, I've got pictures. It's right basically between those two trees. Right. Yeah, and it's on both sides of the canal. Those okay. Two trees. Yeah. <laughs> that is smack dab in there, isn't it? Hmm. Mr. Chair, I move approval. Okay, um, I'll second that. Any questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion carries. Uh, do we have an executive session schedule? Okay, we have four people here that I'm assuming you didn't want to be here just to sit through a board meeting. So again, I'm going to ask for public comment. Sir, I, I apologize to the commissioners. Would, if, if, would you come up and in, yeah. introduce yourself? Yeah, yes. I, I apologize to the commissioners. I'm Ron Dillon with Nitro in the Blues, and I thought the meeting started at 9.30. I don't know if I can still address you on that. You Hopefully. certainly may. I came over from Boise, and I, I was sitting out there thinking I was early, and I was actually late, so my apologies. <laughs> but thank you so much. There's for, a little line between here and there that changes the time zone on you, doesn't it? That's, that's it absolutely been early. correct. Uh, this, is, this is our second year uh, coming back with Oregon's only motorcycle hill climb. We absolutely had a ball last year. I, I've been putting events on since I was a teenager in 1979. And this will be event number 237 for me. I've done everything from Charlie Daniels concerts to motorcycle stuff to kids' bicycle races and everything in between. But uh, to this point, it's been a real pleasure working with you, Matilda County, and the various departments here. Uh, it feels like everybody's pulling on the same end of the rope and wants us to be successful. Working with Jim Whitney has been a pleasure as well. That that gentleman is very sharp and uh, knows his business and very professional to deal with. So uh, today I just wanted to check in with you. We did apply for a, um, a zoning permit again uh, to, to do the event. We had we had no problems last year. I was I was a little nervous going into that because of the hill. It's quite rocky, and I thought we could really have kind of a rocky, dusty mess out here. But we learned something wonderful about Umatilla County. You've got some absolutely magical dirt. And we, <laughs> we built a watering system out there. And Carrie Peterson, who used to be on ABC Wide World of Sports, winning the Widowmaker 30 and 40 years ago, he's been all over the world hill climbing. And he said, that's the best dirt I've ever seen. He called it chocolate cake. It holds its moisture. and the it kind of slid down and covered the rocks, and yet at the same time, we don't have any erosion going on out there. We went out with Jim after the event last year and threw grass seed on it, watered it some more, and it's waist-high grass out there. So I'll be 
pending your approval, we'll be firing up the watering system. And last year, you could see big green stripes on the hill before and, and even a little bit after the event because we put a lot of water on it. But so we're, we're, we're planning on doing the hill climb again on Friday, July 21st. That would be the semi-pro morning where we run kids and uh, racers over 40 and so on, women. And then we are, we are, I'm sure you've heard the buzz around town, we're also doing Thunder in the Blues, which will be the first motorcycle race held in the Pendleton Roundup Arena since 1940. I've been working with Casey Beard and the Roundup Committee on that. So logistically how that works is Friday morning will be hill climbing it from 8 until about 2 and then we'll run over to the arena and the, not the Thunder in the Blues flat track race will be from 3 to, we, we hope to finish by 10, we understand that the, that the um, laws, we have to be done by 11, we'll be done between 10 and 10.30 we believe. Um, a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement about that and then we'll go back to the hill on Saturday and run from 9 to about 6. That'll be pro qualifying in the 450 main and the side-by-side -side event. And then we'll run Sunday morning from 9 to about 2 with the finals and get it all done. But we're excited to be here. There's a lot more buzz than last year. Um, we, we weren't going to, because the, the motels are maxing out, we were actually going to do our own weekend and we were going to be a little earlier, but Jim called me months ago and said, well, gosh, that's right on top of the uh, the Maroon 5 concert, and I realized there's no way we that would be a good move for anybody, so we bumped it back a week to coincide with Pendleton Bike Week. I like working with Eric. Um, I could give you five or six reasons why it's kind of a pain to run the same time as him and five or six reasons why it's very beneficial to run the same time as him. We're, we're starting to pick up a lot of local partners now. We're working with Tia at the uh, Wild Horse Casino. She's helping us on some rooms. Uh, boy, I can't say enough good about the um, Gray Beal distributing the beer guys. They've stepped up as our title partner and Barry and, and, and Brian are great guys over there. But, we're just excited to be here. Um, this, this is a lot of fun. My, my wife is in her mode where now she wants to move to Pendleton. We put these, these various events on. First she wanted to move to Snowville, Utah, and now she, now she wants to move to Pendleton. So who knows, we might, we might wind up over here yet. But nice community, nice people, and we appreciate your help and your support. Do you have any questions or comments or concerns from me? Just a comment that that uh, Umatilla County is a lot closer to things that happen than Snowville is. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> it's a long way to anywhere from Snowville. It, it sure is. It sure is. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, you're, you really are in the middle of everything. You really are. 200 miles to Boise, 200 to Portland, 250 to Seattle. I, I see Spokane. At, at Spokane, as a, as, as a guy that's been doing events all his life, I'm I'm kind of sitting here thinking, wow, why didn't I see the, the Pendleton thing decades ago? You know, it just kind of went right by me. But I think everybody's starting to get it now. And that vastly underutilized Roundup Arena, I, I think there's going to be all kinds of possibilities there. The, the flat track thing is going to be interesting because there, is, there currently is not a single national flat track race in the entire Northwest. It's kind of like NASCAR, there just isn't any. And so the, the AMA, this is running as a semi-pro, kind of a regional race this year. If, if, it, if it goes really well, the AMA may push me to make it a full-blown national next year, which would be the, the only national flat track event in the entire Northwest, and that would bring in the full-blown Harley-Davidson semis and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then it starts to become a question of can, can the infrastructure in the town handle that and Bike Week all, all together. I mean, I've, I'm very familiar with Sturgis. I used to go to Sturgis when I was a kid when it only drew 50,000 people and now it gets 250,000. And that's a, a blessing and a curse all at the same time. But 
definitely you've got all the potential here to do a lot of a lot of neat things, and, and I'm talking to Jim about some other kinds of events. He's got a lot of very interesting ideas about how he'd like to make that an event property. We'll see how, how that goes in the future. There's a group out of Seattle that's bugging Jim and I that would like to build a sprint boat track out there. Um, it's, a, it's a great property, whether it's being u utilized for cattle or or crops or, or events, it's it's got a lot of potential, as they, does this whole area. They can handle Roundup, they can handle lift. Yeah. So, so I, I know that, I know we need to take care of insurance. I was on the phone with my gal, uh, and it's it's actually been issued. I just don't have a copy with me, but I will be emailing that to you right away. We, we will, as always, name the county uh, as a co-insured entity on that and have, have the medics out there and do, do all the things that we need to do to keep it safe. But as usual, we didn't have a single injury out there last year. The medics were bored to death. I saw one of them actually asleep, which, which, which I love. When your medics are asleep during your event, that's about as good as it gets. And knock on wood, my, my insurance guy always tells me to bring up to groups like you that 237 events, 38 years, and we've never had a fatality or a lawsuit. So knock on wood, that's a record we're pretty proud of. All right. Yep. Other questions? None. And you have, you're working on your permits through the county? Yes, planning. with Carol Johnson. Great. Yes. All right. She just told me that I, I needed, needed to address you and get the sign off on that paperwork. So. I can't speak for the other commissioners, but I received absolutely zero complaints from last year. Nor did I get any, so. That's excellent. And we really tried to reach out to those people in Lower Reef because I feel bad for them because of the dust issues there. So we, we gave them some tickets and tried to, and, and Jim paid for some dust control. I paid for some dust control. So I think that was part of why you didn't get any complaints. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You bet. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Just a quick comment. Actually, it's not a comment. My name is Rick George. I'm with uh, Lifeways, and I'm with my colleague, Carol Kayla Cathy, who's the interim director for the county, and Carol Steed from Gobi. And we are, we're just here to observe. We, uh, we're going to be looking at the agenda in terms of what's on the agenda, and you'll see our faces here for just for uh, uh, interest in what's going on in the county. We have 180 employees in this county and we serve almost 4,000 people, so we want to be involved and understand what's going on and relative to the issues that are up on the agenda. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Good to have you here. Thanks. Uh, real quickly on the, the last item, uh, Commissioner's reports, I will be uh, out uh, the rest of this week and next week uh, with family vacation. Uh, we will resume as we get back. Bill? Well, I too will be gone. George has been gone for a while, so he gets to come back and run the county by himself. <laughs> Although, as I've said before, I'll be available by telephone, text, whatever means of communication we need to use. I, I won't be. I'll be out of the country. So. That's a shame. <laughs> but I, I do want to comment that we have uh, we have been busy with economic economic development projects. Uh, it's, it's remarkable how things are starting to pop, and people are starting to make decisions on whether to expand or grow their businesses. Uh, some new businesses coming to town. There's always. A lot of work goes into bringing a business to town and, and making sure all their questions are answered, and that they find what they need, and get relationships built that they need to have. And that's that's ongoing, and it's it, it's exciting to see that in the next five years, just two alone that we're talking to will bring over a thousand new new employees to Umatilla County, and well-paid employees. So. When he's talking about can the can the infrastructure handle it, uh, that's that's an ongoing question. We're uh, we're really ramping up the efforts on housing, in which people will need a place to live, and we want to keep as many of them here in Umatilla County as we can without having them drive all the way from 
Tri Cities. So right. that's what we've been spending a, a good deal of time on. Uh, I think I've previously talked about the depot, so I'll let that one go. Kay. That's all I've got. All right, thank you. If there's no other business, we are adjourned. <laughs>